I must say, this place blows me away. I've been to the Barbican a few, few times, but I never realised this existed, and it's huge, it's mm -hmm. amazing. I mean, so many people visit Barbican, and they don't know that we are here. It, it's a proper concrete jungle, isn't it? It is, um, it is. And, and it, it's got that vibe of a post-apocalyptic movie, hasn't mm -hmm. it, with all the plants spilling down from the concrete structures? It does. I mean, lots of people refer it to, mm. to it like that, or they think yeah. about it as a hanging garden of Babylon. I mean, we have around 1,500 species in here. 300 of them will be cactus and succulents, and the rest will be your temperate uh, mm. plants, which are basically your house plants that mm. overgrow to the size of the space. And, and all in soil which obviously you've had to bring in because yes. we're on the third floor yes. and soil doesn't form here naturally. No, it doesn't <laughs> form here naturally and everything was hand mixed and put in yeah. the bed. Now of course when you move soil and almost start again with it, you, you, you don't have much structure in it, do, no. do you, to start with? And that, have you seen it developing and changing as time has it gone does. by? Yeah, it does. Obviously, you know, we have the organic matter, the leaves will fall and sometimes we don't have mm. uh, time to tidy them up so they will mm. naturally, um, you know, dissolve and all the nutrients will go into mm. a soil and the, the structure of the soil will constantly change. So here's, here's the lovely soil which, which you brought in. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, with the naked eye, you don't see very much, do you? Except no. that you can see the, um, is that, that's not vermiculite, what do you call the white stuff in it? That's it's perlite. Perlite, yeah. and then you've got quite a lot of sand and you can see the sort of loaminess in it and bits mm -hmm. of mica in it as well, can't you? Yes, and a little bit of fine bark as well. Yeah. So, so a little bit of organic matter. Yes, uh, yes. So. And the, you know, I mean, the amazing thing about soil is that it is a biological structure. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, obviously it's been mashed up a bit and dumped in here, yeah. but, but in nature it's built by organisms like a coral reef. Yeah, it does. And uh, you can see the layers of the soil and no matter where you do go mm. around the world, the soil will differ. Mm. It's a very, very complex structure if you think yeah. about it. And they will have to feed all the plants. Um, behind mm. us because that's where the nutrients are coming from. from the now if we had a microscope we'd be able to see even here the mycorrhizal relations, yeah. the fungi mm -hmm. interleafing with the, um, with the roots but also all the tiny little creatures on which the whole system depends. I mean even, even here you'll get a very rich diversity, won't you? Yes, we? yeah we, we will. I mean as you said there will be fungi, there will be bacteria, there will be your nematodes that will mm. live in the soil. Mm. You know they will um, break down the organic matter to fine particles, they can release the nitrogen and you, you know all those nutrients that the plants will need mm. and they will flourish and um, yeah. you know fruit, flower. Yes, do what it's they an need extraordinary to. thing. It's amazing how we take soil for granted and yet we it's do, just yeah. almost magical the way it works. With the gardening, people forget about the soil, but mm. the importance of the, having a good soil, that is your basic. If you think about the house, you have to have a good foundation to have a good house, like, mm. you know, stable house. And that's the same with the horticulture yeah. or gardening or yeah. the plants. Good soil is your foundation for everything what you see. Mm. And we see it sometimes, you know, I see it. If the soil is poor, no matter what you do, mm. the plants will grow. So obviously you take a great interest in the, in the soul. How the soul inspired you to create the, the exhibition that we have now in the, uh, in the curve, in the Barbican? Yeah, so it, it was brilliant being able to collaborate with mm -hmm. people on, on making part of the Our Time on Earth exhibition. We, uh, I work with a group called Helician and of course with the Barbican people. Yeah. Um, just to try to explain what the soil is and the wonder of this mm -hmm. amazing thing which we so take for granted. I mean, if it all were, blowing up 10,000 times, you know, we would yeah. be absolutely astonished by what we see. Yeah. And so that's effectively what we tried mm -hmm. to do. Well, a few hundred times, we yeah. sort of basically sort of have magnified soil and surrounded people by mm -hmm. a, a visual representation of it mm -hmm. um, with all the processes that, that go on in, in, in the soil. And, and I think from some of the feedback, it has inspired people to take more of an interest in it and oh, to recognize great. it as an ecosystem. Yeah, that's, that's great because we need more art that people take inspiration and mm. they can relate to it and we can take it then to our houses, gardening and wherever yeah. we are and just, just think about it and how we sort of are interconnected or yeah. conjoined.